Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be playing in my favorite tier 9 medium tank. It is the Prototipu Standard B. So this is the tier 9 Italian medium. And the reason why it is my favorite tier 9 medium in the game is because it just seems to be so darn consistent, irrelevant of how I choose to play it. When I first started my free to play account at the end of 2018, the Italian auto reloading medium tanks were fresh that year and I decided to make that my first line up on the free to play account and I was getting really good statistics in those tanks irrelevant of how I chose to play it irrelevant of whether I had an incredibly skilled crew irrelevant of whether I had not the best skilled crew whether I decided to sling a load of gold or whether I decided to be more cautious and only fire APCR or the great high explosive rounds this vehicle has that also have 105 millimeters of penetration the only thing that really stops you from being able to use those great high explosive rounds in this tank is the fact that you can't reload different shells into the magazine and that if you want to reload a different type of shell in the tank, even if you have intuition on your loader, it's only going to quickly load one shell. And you're trading one for three, which, as everybody who knows who have played Italian auto-reloading tanks, be they heavy tanks or whether they, whether they be medium tanks, the deeper you go into the magazine, the worse the damage per minute gets. Standard B starts at 1,963 base damage per minute, which rapidly goes down to probably near about 1,500, which is not going to be enough to have any kind of a game in World of Tanks, especially when you're meant to be doing the damage as a tier 9. The real reason why I love this tank is just how flexible a gun like this is, and it's one of the reasons why I enjoy playing the Italian auto reloading heavies as well well at least i enjoy playing the tier 9 auto reloading italian heavy i wouldn't really bother with the rinoceronte that is not a tank that i believe is worth getting at tier 10 if you have the tier 9 a bit like the amx m451 to the amx m454 at tier 10 just not worth jumping up so this is going to be an interesting situation here you're going to you're going to think why didn't you fire at the the s U152. And that's because I knew that if I started to dump my damage per minute in this vehicle, I'll never get to a position again where I'm able to keep my damage per minute high enough to really deal with all of the tanks that I have to. Especially when you're playing a game of assault. When you're assaulting on Siegfried Line, it's all about having a high impact early on in the game because it's definitely one of the harder maps to assault on and I, I, I feel like I'm going to have to have a pretty big impact in this game even though I feel like I've already had a fairly decent impact already if I want to be able to turn the game into my team's favour. So this is a bit of a, an interesting conundrum. Do I fire early against the SU? And I just decide not to. Now, I could have lost the 122. Well, I could have lost 390 damage there from his 122 millimeter. Luckily, I could see that he wasn't using the derp gun as he was using that long caliber armament on the SU-152. And so at worst, I was going to lose 390. But almost, I'd rather take the risk of losing those hit points just to be able to keep the rate of fire in the tank going. Because once you do dump down into the, the empty status of this vehicle, you go from an 11 seconds base reload to a 13 to a 15 seconds base reload. And then you don't feel comfortable enough to be able to pull off cheeky shots like that against the Tiger. Just waiting for the shell to be able to reload and then blind firing the Tiger, shutting down the tier 7 German heavy tank. And you can see that, oh, who, who left that there? Who put that, that rubble on this battlefield? Uh, yeah, I think it was me about a couple of seconds ago. And you're seeing that just what kind of an impact I'm going to have to have a game, or in this game, to be able to take this one down for my team. We're already up to five kills, but there are five vehicles left with five minutes remaining on the game. We haven't done the most damage, 3,300 to, peel, to pick up those five kills. But again, Italian auto-reloading tanks are absolutely fabulous for confirming kills. Especially if you play them where you don't just dump out the magazine at a full health tank and you fire, wait, fire, wait. I.e. use the tank cyclically until you know that you have enough damage left in the magazine to be able to shut down the enemy vehicle. That's why that I do often confirm a lot of kills in my Italian auto-reloading tanks. 
compared to other autoloaders where you just feel like you've got to get the rounds out quickly and then get reloading the magazine entirely. And oh my lord, while I was asking for this E75 to help me there, goodness gracious, the Bat Chap 15555 on our team bails me out of a huge amount of trouble there against the Indian Panzer, shutting them down, dealing 637 with a single what must have been a penetrating artillery shell. Okay, so in this scenario, I don't want to get bogged down in the same position. Clearly, all of the enemy team will be descending upon me. What I'm going to do instead is try to get into a flanking position, where I'll also hopefully make our S1 friend useful. I tell my S1 that I'm going to be moving to the F6 area, because I believe that I'm going to have to have the flanking fire. I'm going to use the, the ditches here to be able to avoid their line of sight, and then hopefully we're going to sneak all the way there, Ill, undiscovered. But actually, there was an Emil 2 that barges around the corner. And our quick reactions shut down the tier 9 auto-loading Swedish heavy tank. And that could have been an absolute disaster. I'm quite lucky that I did the average roll, or slightly more than the average roll on this tank, which is 360 damage. Rolling for 364 definitely saves me at least 440 hit points or more, considering this vehicle has a very bad intra-clip road of three seconds and there was no guarantee that the extra shot would have gone in or, or maybe if I'd missed the first one altogether. So I had a sneaking suspicion that maybe their medium tanks would be going after my artillery and seeing how the batch out 15555 did such a great job in bailing me out against the Indian Panzer I really wanted to help them there and I've kept the batch out 15555 in the game. Looks like our S1 goes down swinging on the southeastern flank but we don't have time to talk about that because we have a Lorraine so I think is it worth actually waiting to reload the full magazine there clearly not if you see that the opponent has about 600 hit points and you know that you've got 720 alpha damage in the magazine it's clearly best to unload to kill the autoload uh, on the enemy team quickly to then be able to maintain your hit points as a rule of thumb I will usually take a chance to dump out a magazine if I feel that my opponents have my average minus 10%. So on a vehicle like this, where I do 720 damage with two shots, I'll usually take a chance at them if they've got about 650. If they don't, if it's not a life and death situation, I'll reload because of the the terrible implications of not being able to deal with the vehicle and then having to possibly reload for 15 seconds afterwards to be able to finish them off. Okay, so in this situation, I'd just like to give a massive shout out to the Bat Shatty on 15555 on my team for going TD mode here. This is going to be absolutely tremendous against the T30 at the end of the game because in this situation, if he shoots the artillery, I'm going to be able to win the game and to be able to have a bit of a crossfire here, that's what you want. You don't want your artillery just sitting at the back, not being progressive. Now I'm going to take my chance considering the artillery just stunned the T-30, come around the corner. He hits me even though he's stunned. But luckily, we shut them down with the two vehicles. And I was hopefully able to show you exactly why the Italian Tier 9 medium tank, the Standard B, is my favorite Tier 9 vehicle. It's not the tank that I always want to take out. While it is a lot of fun to be able to play this tank, I don't think it has the most exciting gameplay. It's not a flashy Char Future 4 that bombs it around and delivers big magazines. It's not like a T-55A, which does feel absolutely phenomenal as a pseudo-German Soviet tank that can go hold down in a lot of awesome locations. And it's definitely not an Object 430, which you can pretty much play like an absolute Muppet and still have exceedingly good results. But for some reason, considering that the Standard B can be this kind of flexible, dependable tank that I feel like I've got a good opportunity against every situation that we come up against. It's one of the reasons why I've had my best results at Tier 9 Medium, and it's in this tank. However, until you master the Italian auto-reloading mechanism and you maybe have the patience or the knowledge of how the situation is going to develop to decide about whether you need to fire or not. This one can prove to still be quite a tricky tank. But if you're an experienced player that's anything like me and you do love overcomplicated game mechanics that you have to fuss with, then this one might be the one for you.
So an ace tanker here for the standard B for 1,528 base experience. We get a Radley Walter as a medal for picking up those nine kills. A high caliber for the 6,320 damage that we had to deal, of which most of it was at long range, giving us the tank sniper medal. And I'd like to give a massive shout out to Luke Rassia Borgia for the awesome support work in your Bant Chantillon 15555. And also to Maffinas, who in that S1 put out more than the expected damage and that help just distracting but also whittling down that flank while I managed to progress to the side and secure the artillery and take on that Lorraine. Couldn't have done it without you too. And so there you have it, my favourite tier 9 medium tank in the game. Although I, I do wonder if it's maybe only me who actually does okay in this vehicle, is it actually has the fourth worst win ratio of any tier 9 medium. So if any of you are thinking, oh, I'm going to jump out there and do really well in this one, maybe I'm just a little bit weird. <laughs> we know that already. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby. And this week, seeing how the Type 5 Heavy is currently top of the tree, what better time to showcase these massive, gigantic, highly durable, big alpha damage vehicles. And so if you want to come along and see the entirety of the Japanese Heavy line, I'll be welcoming you, and um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing all of you live right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.